In this video, I want to have a more detailed look at probability trees. So we started looking at tree diagrams a little bit earlier in our last lesson. But in our tree diagrams that we were doing, every outcome was equally likely. So we're talking about things like uh, flipping a coin. So heads and tails are equally likely, likely outcomes. Or if we're rolling a dice, each number is equally likely to occur. Um, in a lot of situations, that won't be the case. You might have different outcomes and one's more likely than another. So that's one thing that we need to consider. The other thing we need to consider is whether the events are dependent on one another. So for example, if we flip one coin and then we flip a second coin, what happens on the second coin doesn't depend at all on what happened on the first coin. But if we were talking about a situation where, say, we had a deck of cards, if we drew one card out of that deck, it would have a 1 in 52 chance of being chosen. But if we keep that card then and draw a second card out of the deck, well, there's not 52 left to pick from anymore, so there would only be a 1 in 51 chance of getting that specific card. So the second event is dependent on what happens with the first event. So let's have a look at an example and try and clear that up a little bit. So we've got two prizes um, awarded to a group of three male and five female candidates. It asks us to complete the tree diagrams and include the missing branch probabilities and outcomes. So what that means is that there's three males and there's five females. So choosing a male would have a three in eight chance of happening, and choosing a female would have a five in eight chance of happening. So they're not equally likely outcomes. So on here, this is with replacement. So we've got three over eight for males and five over eight for females for that first choice. Now what with replacement means is that the same person can be awarded a second prize. So they get chosen, male or female, give, get given a prize, and then it's still that whole group of eight people, the three males and the five females, who are eligible to win the second prize as well. That, so that means there's still going to be a three in eight chance of a male winning and a five in eight chance of a female winning. So we'd have five in eight and three over eight down here. Now to figure out the probability of each branch, we need to multiply the probabilities along that branch. So this one we had 3 over 8 times 3 over 8 to get us 9 out of 64. So there's a 9 in 64 chance that both the prizes are going to be awarded to males. The next one, we've got if we had a male and then a female, we would have 3 over 8 times 5 over 8, which would give us 15 over 64. So we've got a 15 in 64 chance of it being a male first and then a female. Now if we want a female and then a male, so we'd have F and then M, we'd have 5 over 8 times 3 over 8, which will give us that same probability of 15 over 64. And our last one, we've got a female and then another female. So we'd have 5 over 8 times 5 over 8 which would give us 25 over 64. All right, so that's with replacement. So the same person can win a second prize. In our next one, we've got without replacement. So we've still got this same situation to start with of three males and five females. So our first stage, the probabilities will still be three over eight and five over eight. But in our second stage, we're saying that the same person can't win a prize a second time. So now there's not eight people to choose from anymore, there's only seven. And the ratio of boys to girls depends on who won the first prize. So if our male won the first prize, that means that there's now only two males left to choose from because one of them already won a prize. So we now have two males left and we only have seven people left in total because one of them has already won a prize. So we've got a two over seven chance of a male winning a second prize. Um, for the females, well, the, none of the females have been chosen yet, so we've still got five females to choose from, but we do still only have seven people left, so we'd have five over seven chance of a female winning. Now, if a female gets chosen first, there's still three males to choose from out of a total of seven people now, but if a female gets chosen first, then for the second prize, there's only four females left to choose from, so that would be four over seven. So we can calculate the probability of each outcome. So male, male would be 3 over 8 times 2 over 7, which give us 6 over 56. And next one, male, female, 
would be 3 over 8 times 5 over 7, which would give us 15 over 56. Then we've got female male, which would be 5 over 8 times 3 over 7, which is going to give us 15 over 56. And our last one, female female, would be 5 over 8 times 4 over 7, which would give us 20 over 56. So it's really important to tell the difference with, with replacement and without replacement because it depends, it's telling us whether the second event is dependent on the first event. Our second example is a little more complicated. So we've got a box of chocolates containing five milk chocolates and six dark chocolates. And it tells us that three chocolates are chosen. So we've got three possible outcomes this time. So three stages instead of just two. Um, and it asks us to draw a tree diagram to show the sample space. Now, because we're choosing chocolates out, we're assuming that they're not being replaced each time. They're going to be eaten. All right, so let's have a look. In our first um, branch, our first stage, we can either have milk or dark chocolate. So a milk chocolate would have a 5 in 11 chance of being chosen, and our dark chocolate would have a 6 in 11 chance of being chosen. So that's our first step. Our second step, we can still choose milk or dark, but our probabilities this time are going to be different. So if we've already chosen a milk chocolate, well, there's only 10 chocolates left in total now, and there's only four milk chocolates left. So we'd have four out of 10. There's still six dark chocolates though, so we should have still have six out of 10. All right, if we choose a dark chocolate first, that means there's still five milk chocolates out of 10 that are left and there will only be five dark chocolates left. All right, so we've still got one more chocolate to choose. So we'll draw milk, dark, coming off all of these. It is important when you're drawing these that each stage, all your outcomes line up as well. All right, so for milk up here, we had four milk chocolates. We've chosen another one. So we've only got three milk chocolates out of nine chocolates in total left. But because we haven't chosen any dark chocolates yet, we've still got six out of nine dark chocolates. Now, to double check, because this can get a little bit confusing, to check that you've got your numbers right, your denominators should be going down by one each time, and your numerators should add up to give you a denominator. So three and six gives us that denominator of nine. All right, we've taken one milk and one dark to get over here. So that means that there's only four milk chocolates left and only five dark chocolates left. So we've got four over nine, and that should be five over nine, not 10. All right, in this next one, we've taken one dark and one milk. So again, there's four uh, milk chocolates left and five dark chocolates. Oh, I keep writing 10, that should be a nine. All right, and our last one, if we've chosen two dark chocolates, then that means there's still five milk chocolates left, but there's only going to be four dark chocolates. All right, so we've got all our probabilities, and it's gotten a little bit squished and messy now. I'm not going to go along and calculate the probability for each branch like we did in the question above. I'm just going to do the ones that we need. So the cal calculate the probability of choosing all milk chocolates. So the only way that can happen is if we go along this top branch here. So the probability would be probability of milk, milk, milk would be 5 over 11 times 4 out of 10 times 3 over 9. So we're multiplying the probabilities along those branches. We'll end up with 2 over 33. All right, our next one asks us probability of um, two milk chocolates and one dark chocolate. So in this, a highlighter might be helpful. I don't have one with me, but two milk chocolates and one dark chocolate. So we could go milk, milk, dark. That'll give us it. We could go milk, dark, milk. Um, and we could go dark, milk, milk as well. So that's two milk chocolates and one dark chocolate. So we could choose our dark chocolate first, we could choose it second, or we could choose it last. 
So we have three different um, ways that that could happen. We're going to have to calculate the probability along each of those three branches and then add those three probabilities together. So we're going to have um, 5 over 11 times 6, no, 4 over 10 times 6 over 9 plus, so that's going along this branch. Then we're going to go 5 over 11 times 6 over 10 times 4 over 9. And then we'll plus, and this last branch, so 6 over 11 times 5 over 10 times 4 over 9. And we'll get an answer of 4 over 11. All right, our last one asks us the probability of choosing at least one dark chocolate. Now, there's a whole range of ways that that could happen because we could either want one dark chocolate, two dark chocolates, or three. So it could happen everywhere except in the case where we choose milk, milk, milk. So instead of calculating the probability along every branch except for that one, we're going to use complementary events. So we know that the probability of choosing at least one dark chocolate will be equal to 1 minus the probability of choosing no dark chocolates, which is the probability of choosing all milk chocolates. Now we calculated that up here to be 2 over 33. So we're going to go 1 minus 2 over 33, and we'll get a probability of 31 out of 33. Right, so that's having a look at probability trees.